Hey guys, here we are today. I'm gonna do something I usually don't do. It's a how-to video. I'm gonna be cleaning my nickel 1911, which this gun ain't too bad dirty to begin with, so. But I'm gonna do basically a breakdown. And I know everybody sitting under the sun has done a 1911 cleaning video. But I thought I'd throw my two cents worth into the hat on this. First of all, guys, this is a nickel finish, so. You do not want to get like oils on your finish. It can get underneath it and cause it to bubble up and all kinds of bad stuff to happen to your nickel plate. But all right, first things first, let's empty this gun, make sure it's empty so the internet internet moms don't come and spank us. Some of you guys might like that. All right. Look, she's clear, guys. All right. First thing you want to do is lock that in place. So the slide can't go nowhere. Right here. Just push it up into your lock position. And right here's guys where it can be a bear. Is these ooh, this tape down thing, you know. And a barrel lock. So let's try to get that pushed in there. You can buy tools for this. And I may invest in one of them guys eventually. Now watch out guys. When that comes up, that's gonna be under pressure. Boom. Man, that rised up just like a teenager in a Victoria's Secret store. Look at that. Bam. Okay. We got that done. What you want to do now, this is important, guys. You see right here, this indentation. You want to bring that up to right here. And get that to go. But up first, you don't have to put your safety down. And you bring it right on up here. All right, see right there where that's at. And you want to flip it over. You want to push this right here in. Okay, here we go. A little bit of negotiating. And one thing you want to be careful with, guys, right here with this is down through here. In the 1911 world, we get something called the idiot stretch that runs all the way down through her. I'm gonna show, be my damn to show you how not to do that. All right, let's slide it on forward. Okay, as you notice, my frame's in pretty good shape. I've already, already cleaned it. But something I like doing, guys, is taking Q-tips on hand and get these at the Dollar Tree for dirt cheap, freezer really cheap ones. That way, your wife won't kill you when you steal hers. And then you just go in here. Get every little thing. See, no matter how many times you rub it in there, it seems like you get a little bit of dirt, you know, carbon, whatever. I thought I had that pretty clean, but that's just a little bit. But if you really want to be thorough, once you break it down to this point, like spray it down and let it soak in there, we don't really want to spray it back here. And then, guys, you can like take your Q-tip and reach down in here, right in there. After you spray your Q-tip a little oil and just rub a little oil in the sprains and hammer back in there. You bowl down here and you come right up through here. Get some oil in that. But you just want a little bit, you know, a little residue. You know, you don't want a great whole bunch in there. Of whatever you want to use. Like right now, I'm going to use a little bit of bath ball. I just do this right here. Just have to spray a little bit. I'll be using Biosol for this part of it. Go ahead and clean right in here on the ramp. And in here. In a bow. Just need little areas like back in here. You know, you don't want a lot of oil floating around in there, but you can not give it a little bit of a swipe. Like I said, you don't want to get much oil on these nickel plated firearms because it can cause it to bubble up. That's not so. I say these Q-tips are invaluable for these crevices. But, uh, yeah, right there. Pretty much how that done. Now we're going to disassemble the slide, you know. We're going to clean on it. First of all, we want to pull out this guide rod and spring. Take it off right here. I'm going to use some good old battle saw. Spray that down. So that soaked for a minute. All right, we'll take out the barrel bushing. 
right here, you know, just pull it out. This thing can get really dirty, guys. Like I said, then the barrel comes out. We got some spray down in here. No, no, I don't think I'll use a remote. I'll use a battle saw for this today. And we'll be cleaning and this area up a little bit. Like I said, I won't spray oil back in here. We'll use a Q tip for that in a minute. Oh, let me step over. Spray another Q tip right here. Spray it down a little bit more. Like I said, we'll get back in here and just clean that up really good. See, that, that, that is pretty dirty. Gotta get that crevice of it there. Back in here, frying pans at. Just like that. I said that gets pretty dirty down in there. Q tip. Let's say you just keep hosing them Q tips down. Actually, that could be a pain down in the slide right there. I see some carbon down in dirt. Sometimes you can rough up your Q tip a little bit so you can get down in there. Easier said than done, but it's the best way I know to get down in there. There we go. You just don't want to get a lot of oil down in there. There we go. Get that out. I said this is a long, tedious process. Get, getting rails right there. Sometimes I like to put just a little bit of CLP on the rails, make it really slide. But I didn't bring no CLP up here today. Oh wow, that is so dirty in there. More than I thought. We'll just pull a bolt and slide down here. Like I said, you can get microfiber towels. Dirt cheap at the Dollar General. That's what I usually do. Just get that, get some in the rails right there. Get like glass, guys. Like I said, I like taking the CLP to that. Usually what I don't use. Let's spray that down. You know what I'm doing. Just getting the oil right in there, a little bit of oil, not saturating it too heavy. Down in there. It's amazing how dirty that gets in there. I even take the tip of a towel and then in there I said that I have to get every little bit out guys I'm just that's how I am I see it. it annoys me so I'm gonna get it <laughs> all right damn just like that like I said don't spare these these q-tips man these things are only a dollar so like I said don't spare them Y'all up and you slide in here, carbon seat dirt stuff gets in there. Just like that. And like I said, that's well how I clean it. Let's see here. Alright guys. Now we're gonna work on the barrel. And first thing I like to do is just spray it down with something or use a you know this loose this battle saw. I like rim old battle saw is good, but on the inside of the barrel I'm just gonna like give it a couple of squirts. Rim oil, let it soak for a second. And just turn like that and turn the barrel so it runs down. You see a little bit dripping out, let me spray a little bit right there. 
We'll just let that sit. Then this guy, you spray some in there. This gets dirty too, guys, which I cleaned this with mine before, but I bet there's still a little bit of crap in there. Let's see. Yeah, see? This gets incredibly dirty on the inside. The oil just keeps that from ever corroding in there. Said so then this we might use a little we'll try a little bit of the battle saw. We'll just let that set. Spraying we soaked down a minute ago, Bill. Let's give it a wipe off with a microfiber towel. Just like that. And guys, the tip when you make sure you put this back, spraying together, see this in right here? This is set on the guide rod guide rod side, and this right here where it's not quite you know, tapered up that. This is going this guy. So remember that if you have this type of spring. Just a quick tip. And that's clean. And like I said, you can give this guy here. Barrel lug. Get down in there with a Q-tip. Clean it up. Make sure there's no carbon in there. And like I said, if this is like nickel like this, make sure you get that excess oil off. You don't want that oil on your nickel plate. Just make sure it gets off your fingers. Now that looks good. Uh, then slide. I've been letting that set a little bit up here, guys. We're gonna give that one more run with a Q-tip. All that out of there. So much that get that cleaned up in there really good. Like I said, we can just give our Q tip just a little bit of a squirt and get on the rails. You know, soak it up a little bit. There we're so like this on the rails in there. Yeah. A little lubrication on the rails. Down here. 1911s aren't that bad, you know, they're a machine, you know, they're machines, you know, my Glock will run for, you know, forever, if you really wanted to, but, you know, I don't like doing that, even my Glock, I like cleaning it, same way with AK. Now, guys, this thing right here is so reliable, I mean, you know, this is why I carry, but like I said, I still love 1911s, I've always, since I was a kid, but I love my Glock too, so like I said, I'm a gun hoe. I love everything. <laughs> so I'd, I'd even take a Zip 22 and a Dart, Dart it. Somebody give me one, even though you can't get rounds for that Dart, Dart it no more. Uh, like I said, I, I was unfortunately I wasn't lucky enough to shoot a Zip 22 one time. I was actually a pretty cool looking, spacey, stapler looking gun. Ugh. Oh, I'm getting tall, so it. All right, this barrel has soaked. For a little bit guys let's i'm using the allen tactical that i'll be giving away a new one y'all can't have mine and let's run that through there oh yeah i thought i had that clean but all oh, there's a little more debris comes through now like i said i don't think i have no copper filing because i really not fired this 1911 enough but i just like getting my inside the barrel really Shiny, but you guys probably can't see on camera where I'm what got this angle. But never do this, guys. This side because the rifling and you get new guys, you can booger your rifling up. All this stuff from this side and back. Be really careful. But uh, and then like I said, I'm pretty, I get pretty anal. Then I'll take a, a shotgun off. But these things are a dime a dozen. So if you get them dirty, I always just go buy another one. And that really gets that nice and pretty inside. But like I said, you guys can't see it, but that is shiny. And if I store it, guys, when I got a part, I'll spray oil. Just a little bit of oil in there if I'm not going to shoot it for a while. And I'm going to a light coat of bile saw in there. Because I'm going to be storing it. I, I really like bile saw. It smells, it stinks the high heaven, but... It's a really good protecting. 
Now, on like I said, the rails, if I really want to get crazy, look at that, it's still dirty in there coming out. That's insane, guys. But it looks pretty good. Like I said, I like cleaning about as much as I do shooting, honestly. I said I loved I love cleaning. That's part of the hobby. Got that one more time about the dry patch. Cause I probably won't be shooting this guy for a while. I'm gonna give it a light. Spread a bow saw in there, guys. Just ever so lightly. And I'm gonna leave that in there like that. Just leave it. Just that one little squirt. All right. Mm. Like I said, here comes the fun part, guys. The reassembly. Mm. All right. Remember, I gotta hold my jaw. I gotta get this back on camera. <laughs> hold my jaw right. Let's get this barrel back in here. All right. We'll push this guy in. There was something oh, like that. Bam, she's in there. Alright. Next thing we'll get in here. Guys, see this lug right here? You want to turn that right in here. Get it in there. Then turn it back over here to this side. You want this this way. Okay, now we're going to reassemble our spring. God, God. Remember what I said about this end goes right here with the this goes on this. This end will go down on the barrel. And when time comes, this would you see how that is right there? Right that it's not like pinch down flush. Cap it go back on that. And like I said, I got a little oil residue in my hands. If you got a nickel, you want to clean this up and dry this off before this goes back in. So we'll just slide it right in there. All right, you want this guy right here, down. Okay, so far we got half the battle here, guys. And I'll explain in a minute here about this, about the idiot scratch. Ooh, did I see? Oh, I see a little bit of carbon right there. Yeah, can't stand that. All right. So then you want to put this down. This is what I do, guys. Try to get the back camera. See how that is. Like I said, hold your jaws just right. And you're going to line this hole right here. This hole with this. Just like that. And you want to push. All right. I think I got that. This is probably one of the easiest 1911s I've ever assembled. All right, here's what I'm talking about, guys. We don't want to get an idiot scratch. We'll go back over here. Get that guy in there. See if he's caught. Yeah. Now then we can flip it up once we catch him. And then we'll raise this back up. This is just my way of doing it, guys. And we got to bring this. Remember, we got to bring this guy back up, right? So far up here. Ooh, I see a little bit of oil on that. I can't have that dripped on that nickel. Like I said, if you got stainless or tap, you know, Maddie, you don't have to worry about this with your finish. But knowing my luck, that guy came off. We'll keep going here. Uh, oh, I think that's perfect. I'm not gonna get a lot better than that, I don't think. All right, we'll keep going right here, guys. All right, you want to keep this down like, see right here, you gotta watch it right there, because you get that idiot scratch. And like I said, you just sort of keep him to the level right there and maneuver up. But keep this aligned right here, make sure that's aligned right with it. I'm going to keep trying here. Did I get it? Yeah. See, like that, guys. No idiot scratch. That is the worst thing to reassemble on these guns. Is worrying about getting that damned idiot scratch. That idiot scratch. 
back in ruin their 1911 it's finished like that now then comes the last and best fun part go ahead and lock your slide in place if you don't have a nickel don't worry about this step don't have to, you don't have to worry about it I'm gonna stride this off because I got a little bit of oil residue in there I get down I gotta wipe this thing down good make sure you know there's no oil okay with that locked make sure this is locked guys that end on there I may break down just by a tool with that you know what I mean that would be the best thing to do is buy a tool and, oh wow you know shape my bed meat hurts over that guy it's never fun like I said guys this brain reminds me like I said of a teenager in a Victoria's Secret store it's hard to get that aim to go down Oh man, we about to go and wrestle. <sighs> oh, there we go. Wrestled off. Now then, we want to unlock it. Do a function test. Oh, that's like glass. And then, like I said, if you got, like I said, you got the nickel like I do, wipe down any you know, excessive oil in there. Nothing works. Yep. Okay. Guys, I really appreciate you watching my first how-to. Like I said, my video is playing a dime a dozen. There's a ton of other guys that I probably did that better than I did. But I hope you enjoyed it. But like I said, nickel plate, you want to keep them oils off of it. Uh, as it can, like I said, get underneath that and cause it to start bubbling up. That's a big no-no. But like I said, if you love these old guns, like I said, they're amazing. I love them. So, uh, as always, thank you so much, guys, for watching. And I'll have another cleaning video doing something. I may start this series if this does well. 100-plus subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Later.